The joy of the Lord is our strength. I'm Chaplain Wood and this is Truth in Action. Today we're going to be in 1 John chapter 1 in the first four verses. And we're going to see what it is to have fellowship with one another and then how that produces fellowship with God and His Son Jesus Christ and then brings the joy of the Lord into our lives and makes it complete and full. Amen. So let's begin. So we're going to be, uh, and, and just to know this, that uh, the joy, that joy is connected to our hope in our resurrected Jesus and to the Father himself. Amen. Good deal. So we're looking at verse 4, and it says, And these things, John says this, And these things I write, we write to you, that your joy may be full. Now it's important that our joy is full. Uh, no matter what circumstance we're, we find ourselves in, and in life, there are always going to be uh, tribulations. There's always going to be trouble in this life. Even Jesus said that. He said, in this world, you will have troubles, but be of good cheer or be of, of great courage. I have overcome the world. And remember, uh, I talked about in a previous uh, broadcast that, that uh, to have great courage, like in Joshua chapter 1, he says it at least three times, means that we need to, to have great courage is to hang on to what God is about to tell us. And uh, for Joshua is to have great courage because I am with you, have great courage because you are going to bring the promise uh, to the people that, uh, that I, their inheritance that I gave it to them. And, and, but for us today, when I hear uh, be of good cheer, be of great courage, I have overcome the world, uh, that gives, I grab a hold of that promise and realize that because I'm in Christ, that I'm a world overcomer, amen, in Christ. And so we, we realize that, the, that we need joy in our life, not happiness. Happiness uh, is fleeting. Happy, you've heard this before. Happiness is fleeting. Happiness uh, comes and goes. But the joy of the Lord is established in our faith in who God is and that there is an earnest expectation or a hope uh, in the future, and that hope uh, connects us to the joy of the Lord. So, amen. And, and realize, God has never lied to us. So, it says, and these things, in verse 4, these things I write to you that your joy may be full. What things? Well, what John is talking about here is that he and the other disciples have seen uh, the risen Christ. They have, uh, uh, it says here in verse 1, that, we, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, with their own ears, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. And so he's, he's saying that if you can uh, uh, understand and grab hold and receive what, what John is saying, and even today, that we can um, grasp hold of what the word of life has done for us. And it says, that which was from the beginning. He's talking about when in John, uh, the first chapter, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We're talking about that Word of life. And then in verse uh, 17, or verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so that is uh, the... Uh, that is the God we're talking about. That is the word of life we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about Jesus himself who, who was the word in the beginning and became flesh. And, uh, and, and he became the begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. And so we look at this and, and, and that verse 2 says the life was manifested. So Jesus, the word of God, was manifested. And that word manifested means that it was made plain or that we can know and actually, exactly what what um, what John is saying here is that it's in a place where we can see and hear and handle uh, the Word of God. And you know as well as I know that that in your life, in your experience, since you became a born again believer, that God has proven Himself, that Jesus has shown Himself, manifested Himself in in His Word, and and that His Word has come to pass in your life. And every day you have these testimonies. And so when we look at this, and it says in verse 3, that which we have seen and heard we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Now one of the things I want to talk about here is that fellowship is a deeper uh, connection than relationship. 
Now, you may think that I'm, um, you know, just uh, picking at things or, or trying to make uh, small differences and distinguish it. But I, but I think if you want to walk, I want to walk in a deeper relationship with God, I need to understand my relationship with God and my fellowship with God. Amen. And so we look at that, having fellowship with other believers who have witnessed God or has seen the manifestation of God brings us into a place of uh, uh, where we're single-minded and where we understand the purpose of God. Listen, we have fellowship with Jesus because we have fellowship with the Father because Jesus has seen the Father and declares him to us. And so as we, ha we know the Father because we know Jesus. I, I know you. You know Jesus, therefore I know the Father. That's what John is talking about in these first four verses, that if we come into fellowship about, about declaring who Jesus, the word of life is, then we have fellowship with not only one another, but with the Father and Jesus himself. If we have fellowship with those who declare they have Jesus, then we have fellowship with Jesus and the Father. Amen. Now, fellowship versus relationship. I just kind of want to break this down a little bit. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of throw this out. You, you can have, you cannot, you can have uh, fellowship you can, and relationship, but there, you can also have relationship without fellowship. You cannot have fellowship without relationship, but you can have relationship without fellowship. That's how I want to say that. So fellowship is, is, to, have, is, is to have this uh, relationship with a connection that is, uh, that, is re that is focused on something specific. So you have this connection to where relationship is just that uh, you have this, it could be a distant uh, relatedness uh, that you have with someone. And I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Listen, I cannot escape my relationship with God. I'll start with that. Um, no matter who I, who I am and no matter what I think about who God is, um, I can, I can be not believe in God that doesn't change the fact that he is my creator. He created me whether I believe that he created me or not. Therefore, my relationship with God, even before I was born again, my relationship with God was he is my creator. And I cannot escape that. And so I have, that is, that is the relationship all humanity has. Well, all, all things that are created have is that God is their creator. And I cannot escape that. Any more than I can escape uh, my biological parents or my parents. Whether I ever knew them or not, uh, I am related to them because they are my parents. I'm related to family members I've never met. It doesn't change anything. I don't have fellowship with them, but I am related to them. I have a relationship of some sort because of my relatedness with them. And so God is my creator, whether I acknowledge him or not. Um, and prior, I'll just say this, prior to um, knowing Jesus, I, have, I had a relationship with God. He's my creator. I didn't acknowledge him as my creator. I just, uh, but that's the fact. But I had fellowship with darkness because I wasn't born again. So my, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but my fellowship would have been um, with, uh, with darkness, with, um, with Belial, uh, with lawlessness. That was my fellowship. My relationship is that God is my creator. And so we look at this. Fellowship with others who believe in God brings fellowship with God. That's why it's important that we come together. Um, it, it's not enough just to belong to a universal church. Uh, it, it's in, I truly believe in the power and the fellowship of the local church where we come together and we, we, uh, we have fellowship with one another in Christ, talking about the things we've seen, the things we've heard, and the things that have been handled by the word of life. And then that brings a deeper fellowship uh, with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so, why is it important to have fellowship with God and not just a relationship? A relationship simply acknowledges that God is who he says he is, he, uh, but I have no interest in submitting my life to him. Fellowship is the desire to submit to the interests of God or the purposes of God and not my own. It may, and like I said, it may seem like I'm making a big deal out of nothing, but I truly believe that something important about fellowship 
uh, I'm sorry, uh, relationship, understanding the difference between relationship and fellowship. Because you hear this all the time. You know, I don't really believe in religion, I believe in relationship. Well, I'll be honest with you, I believe in religion. I think religion is important. It's how we, um, uh, each of us have discerned um, who God is in our life. And, and even though it's always going to be uh, uh, weak or not enough, uh, whatever religion uh, we put God in, it's, God is bigger than that religion. But religion is still important because it keeps me disciplined, it keeps me on the path as long as my religion is, is Bible-based, as long as it's scriptural. Um, and that's why we have different denominations, because we all see uh, God a little bit differently, and so we have different types of religious organizations. Um, I'm talking within, the Christian, within Christendom, that we have these religious organizations. And so whether I'm uh, Catholic or, or maybe I'm high church, Presbyterian, Lutheran, things like that, or maybe I'm uh, free church, uh, uh, Pentecostal, or just non-denominational. Um, we each have our, our ways of doing things, our ways of worshiping God, and, and those things are important, but never more than more important than fellowship. And my, the distinction the distinction I want to make today is that is that is that we need to have religion. We need to have. We need to understand we already have relationship with God as he's our creator. And then we, in depth, we bring relationship to a place of fellowship with God. And so fellowship is the desire to submit everything to God. Um, the difference is the depth of intimacy. And my, this is my opinion, of course. Uh, I could be splitting hairs, but this is my opinion. Uh, the difference is the depth of intimacy one has with God. Uh, I remember when, when I first got saved, um, even though my, my relationship began to, to widen some because I realized he wasn't just, uh, I, I learned with, with my mind, not my heart, that he wasn't just my creator, but he was also my savior, uh, he was also my healer, he's also um, my provider, you know, all of these things, these things I learned. But it wasn't until I began to know him through his word, through his spirit, intimately, to hear his voice, that I began to have fellowship with him. And that, and I truly believe, according to 1 John, that happens when you have fellowship with one another, declaring what God has done, what you've seen, what you've heard, and what you've handled. I truly believe that. And so, uh, the difference is the depth of intimacy. And, 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 I, and I think you'll remember, just think back in past, when you first got saved, what did, you knew more about God than you knew God. The more you got to know God, the more fellowship you had with God. Uh, the, the more you knew about God, you, you understand the relatedness, the relationship you had with God. But the more you knew God himself through the Holy Spirit was the more that you began to have this uh, fellowship with him. So... Um, So one thing I want to say is let's not just be related to God. Let's not just have a religion where we do things to, uh, out of uh, rote repetition. Let's not just have, uh, let's not just say we're related to God, a head knowledge. I'll say it that way, a head knowledge. Well, let's understand that we have this fellowship with God uh, because we have seen him and because we have seen him, because we have heard him and handled him, the word of life I'm talking about then now we have fellowship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And having fellowship with God will produce a joy that is full within you. A fellowship with God will bring joy. So if you notice that joy is not there, well then get into the Word of God and begin to understand what God expects uh, to, to bring about a joy. And I tell you, it, it is almost always linked to understanding the hope, the blessed hope, you have in our Lord Jesus and that the main blessed hope that we have is that Jesus will return for his church that's the main one and then we have all these promises that are hopes uh, that as we live our life that you know the, the, our, all the things we pray for the desires of our heart the things that we want to happen in our life that we can find in the Word of God those are hopes and those things will bring you joy as you begin as they begin to not only be fulfilled but even before them because you know God will fulfill them in your life so it brings a joy right now in your life not a happiness so God is a God of hope 
and hope brings joy. In fact, let's look at uh, Romans 15, 13. And it says this, and it's, it's a prayer, almost a, it's a declaration or a prayer of, uh, of Paul. And he says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, that you may abound in hope, that you may have high hopes, great hope. Listen, don't listen to the world that says don't get your hopes up. When you're in God, when you understand God's word, when you have fellowship, not just, not just something to do uh, in practice, I'm talking about religion, although it's important, not just something to understand in your head about God, although that's important, but that you have this fellowship in his word, through his spirit, understanding that you know the voice of God. And when our expectation is in God, we will be filled with, God, with joy and peace. Get your hopes up in God. Amen.